standing for our first hymn on page 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, page 103. of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed on page 881 in the back of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Mount Zion United Methodist Church. Do we have any first-time guests with us this morning? If so, please raise your hand. Any first-timers with us? Let me direct your attention to the flowers. The flowers are to the glory of God and in memory of Mickey Stanley, placed with love from Jane Scoggins. And it says, as Mickey often said, that friendship never ends. And thank you very much for the flowers, Aunt Jane. Yeah. Any announcements th this morning? Lisa?
Thank you. Jeannie Robbins is turning 90, so her address is in the narthex. That's a big one. Other announcements? Even. Hey, y'all, just a couple, well, three announcements. Um, one, I put something in the newsletter, but I want to make sure I bring it, just draw some attention to it. I'm wondering what I should preach. Obviously, I've got some ideas, but I'm wondering what, if you have any ideas. Is there anything, are there any questions, like questions about God, a uh, question about or like a particular scripture you don't understand, um, anything you'd like, you know, I've never heard a sermon on this uh, that you'd like. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm truly curious as to what, what you might think would, would be a good, a good sermon topic, and I want to look at that and see if maybe I can incorporate that in, into some of my sermons. So put something in the offering plate, uh, you know, pull me aside or send me an email or something. And if you got any ideas, I would, I would truly love to know them. Uh, so just do let me know. Uh, second announcement, I'm really excited. On Sunday, July 18th, we're going to be having a guest preacher. Uh, y'all, y'all hear from me a lot. And, uh, and I think it'd be really good. I, I, I'm honored. Uh, a, a good friend of mine and a colleague I, I hold in high esteem, um, Reverend Karen Hoyt will be joining us. Uh, she's a deacon in the United Methodist Church and currently works as a chaplain in the uh, Northeast Georgia Medical Center and just has, you know, a unique experience, unique perspective. And I'm just excited that she's going to be come, coming and uh, delivering our message on July 18th. So, so don't miss that. She's a, she's a gifted speaker. And so I do hope you'll be, uh, you'll be blessed by her word that she'll bring. Also on July 18th, uh, we're starting something new. Uh, Matt Morris and I are going to be leading a, a workshop, basically. It's, uh, it's going to be during the Sunday school hour. We're, we're going to figure out exactly what that's going to look like. We're going to be talking to you, Sunday schools or whatever. But, but what we're going to do is, um, is this book. It's called The Workbook of Living Prayer. It's by a guy named Maxie Dunham. Um, it's, it's, it's great. I've, I've worked through a lot of this book myself. I'm, I'm really excited to do it with groups of people. Why Sunday morning? Because you're here on Sunday morning. Uh, I, I really, uh, you know, I want people to experience it. While, you know, Sunday school will still happen, maybe if you really want, this is going to be a six-week study, maybe step away from that for just a period and come to this, uh, this, this workshop on prayer. And I, I really think it's going to be a blessing. And I, and I want to reach, Matt and I want to reach as, as many people as possible. Uh, uh, you know, Matt just was uh, certified as a, uh, as a licensed lay speaker in uh, the North Georgia Conference of the United Methodist Church. And, uh, and that's, that's a... That's not an easy accomplishment. There's a lot to do there, and he's here today. So let's just let's give him a hand. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm I'm thankful for Matt, and uh, we were gonna we we had been planning to do to do like a prayer thing back during the COVID time. We were all set to do it, and then like numbers went back up, and we shut down everything again, and. So finally, we can get together and, and do something. So uh, that's going to be starting up July 18th. It's this, uh, and we'll get information about purchasing a book as, as well. But it's this workbook of living prayer by Maxie Dunham on July 18th. Thank you all. Thanks, Josh. Congratulations to Matt. Uh, Carol Cobb wanted me to remind everyone that there will be, uh, they will be assembling the hygiene kits in the fellowship hall right after the service today. So please head over there if that's... Uh, that's a good crowd. It only takes a few minutes. So um, that's right after, right after the service this morning. Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am.
Sounds good. That's Friday, July 9th for the ladies. Thank you. Any other announcements? How about prayer concerns? Liam? Grand. Grand. Yeah. Beverly Up Church. Thank you. And Joe? Josh Gibby, Barbara Prater, and Don Cobb. Cliff Thomas is having surgery on Tuesday on his foot. Cliff Thomas, yes, ma'am. Uh, Trisha, Lizzie, Heath are traveling to uh, the world. Traveling mercies. Uh, Rosa is still in El Salvador um, with the passing of her grandmother, and she asked us to pray for her uncle, Jose Andreas Mendez. He's mm-hmm. having some kidney issues, so she is staying maybe another week or so. So she's listening right now. Yeah. <laughs> Jose Andreas Mendez. Gene Collier. Yes, sir. Martha. Yes, sir. Martha Robertson. Donna. Alice Kelly, Rosa Lanham, and Seda Hawkins. Marcia. Gloria Kane. <laughs> Gloria Kane, thank you. Robin Tennant. Robin Tennant. Linda Meyer. Linda Meyer. Also the family of um, Ellen Miley. She just passed away. The Miley family? Yeah, yeah. Cousin of Mercy. Yes, sir. Mita? Yes, ma'am. Traveling mercies. Any other prayer concerns or praises? If there are no more, we'll take these to the Lord in prayer. O oh, eternal God, our good shepherd, God of all life, Thank you, God, for this day you have made and the opportunity to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, let us not take for granted this time or this day to be together and worship you. Our time here truly, Lord, is is so short. We feel the fleeting passage of life. And we recognize how fragile our existence is. We're on a tiny planet amidst the infinite vastness of the cosmos. And so we say along with the prophet Isaiah, all flesh is grass and its glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. And yet at the same time, we also confess the word of our God stands forever. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Lord, sometimes we look at you, we look to you as frightened children look to their mother. For you alone can comfort us. Have mercy on us, O God. See our tears, hear our cries. Lead us all as pilgrims through the valley of the shadow of death into the light of resurrection of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. For it is in Christ and through Christ that we live and we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
We'll continue our singing on page 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Page 140, please stand. why don't y'all come on down this morning for this morning's offering. Oh Lord, all we have needed your hand has provided, God. Great, great is thy faithfulness. Lord, may our offering this morning, may what we give, God, be a sign of our faithfulness. And may it all be to the glory of your kingdom. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our script reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 1 and 17 through 27. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Deshar. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. You daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson and luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. At this time, we'd like for the children to come down for the children's message. morning. How, how are you? I know we have some traveling today, but it's good to see you. Y'all doing all right? Good, good. So today is our last Sunday together. I know. It was really short, wasn't it? I know. Thank you for being sad, at least pretending. I'll give each of you a good dollar later. Thank you for that. It was great. Um, so today, what I was thinking when I got up, I said, you know, it's our last Sunday together in June. And I said, I really, I just want to look really nice today. And so I asked Patricia, I said, what can I do to look nice? And she said, well, you could probably fix your hair, would be great. Um, and so I said, okay. I said, well, you know, how do you do that? And she said, well, they have these things. And do you all know what this is? What is it? A hair dryer? What do you do with it? Dry your hair. That makes sense, right? So hair dryer. So she said, you could use this. And I thought, well, okay, that's great, you know. And so I watched a quick video of how to do it. And... Um, <laughs> When I, I went to hold it, and I just, you know, just kind of pressed some buttons, and nothing happened. What, why do you think nothing happened? It's broken. But you know what I found out? I forgot to plug it in. So it didn't work. So I didn't know that. I thought this was just a decorative cord here. But this actually this is, serves a purpose. You're supposed to plug this in and to get power. And so she said, well, you got to plug it in. And so I said, okay. So uh, I plugged it in, and I think my hair turned out all right. What do you all think? Looks pretty good, right? All right, so... We were talking about that, and I said, well, that's kind of like us. Like, we, as Christians, we have to have power, don't we? Who do we get our power from? From God, that's right. So this power comes from EMC, or Georgia Power. And you all know Mr. Tommy. He works at, at Georgia Power. So I got to talk to him because power is not cheap, right? So we got to talk to him, don't we? Okay, we'll talk to him later. But power from God is free. Isn't that awesome? So I want to read you all scripture. So we read from 2 Samuel, but this is actually a different passage in 2 Samuel. And it says, God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. Can you all remember that? God's your strength and power. And God is free. But what do we have to do? We just have to listen to God, right? We read our Bible and pray. Sound good? So get your power from God. And um, I'll focus on trying to work better with this hairdryer later, okay? Y'all think I did all right there for the first time? Okay. All right, well, let us pray. God, thank you for this day. I uh, thank you for, uh, for Liam and Sophie, and uh, thank you for those that aren't here, those that are traveling, uh, those that might be sick. Just thank you for your power for us that is free, if we'll just acknowledge it uh, and just plug into you and uh, pray and give you thanks for, uh, for all that you've done for our life. Uh, keep us safe this week. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Jake. At this time, we ask you to stand up, greet your neighbor, tell them God loves you. This is 
That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Amen. I'm wondering if y'all remember this. Uh, this is some happened a few years ago in, uh, in 2018. To be exact, it was on, on Saturday, January 13th, 2018. There was a, uh, now I just read about it, but in, in Hawaii, in the state of Hawaii, people received a text message on their phones. It said, everybody, citizens of Hawaii, said, ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. Everybody in Hawaii got that. I mean, people's, people were out shopping, people, you know, out going to the beach, doing whatever, having their vacations. All of a sudden, life took a turn that day. Um, I, was, uh, I was reading the, uh, the website uh, Reddit, and people were talking about what, what happened, what was going through their mind. When that happened, a few, a few comments. Uh, somebody wrote, I had enough time to call my wife when I saw the message. Four seconds to say I love you and express how stupid it is that we're fighting. She was afraid and alone. I was on my ship. Later they write, on the upside, my wife and I have made up. Imminent nuclear death is apparently a pretty good marriage therapy. Uh, I imagine it is. I imagine so. Somebody else writes, honestly, I said goodbye to a lot of people, not really through text or anything, but emotionally. Probably the weirdest thing I've ever been through. You get to a point where you kind of accept it and think it's the end. Coming out of the other side is so strange. I th honestly think this is going to have a pretty profound effect on my life. Uh, other person writes, uh, forefront of my mind was the thought that I'd never see my wife again. Made me realize just how lost and alone I'd be without her and that I'd be happy just spending the final moments of my life at her side. Once that passed, we made hash browns and listened to the radio to see when the road was open and the traffic was cleared so I could go to work for the rest of my shift. LOL. So people's priorities that day did, did a complete 180, right? All of a sudden, like this trivial stuff they're doing and the conflicts they're having with people just didn't matter anymore. All of a sudden, it just is about saying goodbye and, and saying some prayers and spending a few moments in, in some gratitude and trying to figure out what to do, obviously. Some people are looking for shelters and stuff. Uh, anyway, if, if problems went from, from being very big to, to almost nothing. And so then 38 minutes later, got another text message that said it, it had been a mistake. It was, it was genuinely a mistake. There was an employee from the, and of course all over the news, an employee from the Hawaii Emergency, Emergency Management Agency, during a shift change, somebody had, had pressed the wrong button, apparently, and, and it, sent that, it sent that message out to everybody in Hawaii. Did, did, and I wonder, and, and that's what I, what I really wondered. I mean, did they, what, what, what happened in their life after that, after you see something like that, did, did they love a little deeper? Were they maybe a little bit more attentive to what they were doing, a little bit more present in their life? Were they, were they, were they maybe a bit more grateful for what they had? Psalm 90 says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a wise heart. See, we're weak. We really like to think we're very strong, but really we're, we're just very weak. We're, we're here, compared to the span of eternity, we're here for just a blink of an eye. We're not here for long at all. I mean, to literally number my days, if I'm to literally number my days so far today, I'm, I'm 15,424 days old. That's, that's more than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I don't want to waste the days that I have. I don't know how many I've got left. Who knows? We shouldn't waste the time we have. We, we, we've got to number our days. Don't waste the time that we have. Lord, teach us to number our days. 
It's a good lesson. That's a good thing to learn. But what happens is we run from some of our best teachers. We don't always want to learn, right? Um, and, and I'm talking about, and what I'm talking about really learning today is learning, learning from the darkness in our lives. L- learning from the times when things aren't bright and sunny and happy. But, but learning from some of the darkness in our lives. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, geez, Josh, Captain Buzzkill over here, dude. Dude, I'm trying. I thought I made the choice to be happy today. I thought, you know, I'd, and then you, what are you saying? What are you preaching about? Come on. Bear with me. Like, just, just, just bear with me today, please. It, it, I think this is important. It's not, this is not the most popular subject. I know this is, this is church, right? We're supposed to be happy. Um, but grief and, and sadness and darkness are realities in our lives. Like we're going to go through hard, difficult stuff. Like it's going to happen. It, we don't really have a choice. We do have a choice with how we deal with all that stuff, right? And, and darkness, the darkness in our lives can be a great teacher if we don't run from it, if we're willing to learn, and if we approach it with faith. So we jump today, we jump into the Word of God today. We're in the second book of Samuel at the beginning. David has just raided the, the camp of the, uh, of the Amalekites, and, and a man has come to report that the Israelite army has suffered a disastrous defeat. Uh, Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. Um, he, and this guy, the, the, uh, Amac- the, this Amalekite, he actually lies to David. He says... He says he himself was the one who killed Saul because maybe he hopes to be rewarded for Saul's death. Because, I mean, Saul was not David's most favorite person, right? Saul had tried to kill David several times. Saul was envious of David's prowess as a warrior. Saul was fearful of, of David's ambitions to be king. And so you might think, one might think, and, and this, this Amalekite probably thought, David's going to celebrate. David's going to hear that, and he's, he's going to be overjoyed. Saul is dead. I mean, Saul had chased David like, like Tom chasing Jerry all across the desert. I mean, it's, it's been quite the cat and mouse game for them. But no, instead, David pours out his heart when he hears of Saul's death. The, the pain that we see in these verses here is real. And, and, and by the way, I want to I add something here because this is really interesting. This is kind of off the subject, but this is cool. Um, if you look in, uh, in 2 Samuel here, if you look at uh, verse 18, it says, He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jashar. Again, this is, this is off the subject, but I want to point this out. Um, this book of Jashar is, is this kind of mysterious thing. It's also referenced in the, the book of Joshua where um, the, sun and, the sun is ordered to be quiet. Uh, the, sun is, the sun and moon are ordered to stand still. I'm sorry. And, um, but we don't really know what was in that book. It's called, it would translate, it would be like book of the just man, book of the, of the righteous man. And, and again, off the subject, like it could be out there somewhere. Like that book of Jashar like could be in a scroll in the back of a cave or something. And one day they might find that. And I think that's so cool to think like, you know, they're, they're still, it still could, could teach us a lot about Scripture and, and who God is and everything. That there, there could be this, this whole book that maybe could have made it into Scripture if we just knew about it. That is so cool. That is so cool. Anyway. It's just this, just this mystery out there somewhere. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. David cannot bear to hear the rejoicing of Saul's enemies. David and Jonathan, they were the very glory of Israel, right? How the mighty have fallen. Psalm, Psalm 66, Psalm 66 says, All the earth worships and sings praises to God. And here, 
In contrast, here David is saying, he asked, let there be no dew or rain or bounteous fields because of these deaths. May the very earth be pained because of my broken heart, he says. I, I want the very earth to suffer because I'm hurting so much. I mean, who can't kind of relate to that? I, I don't want to see... You ever been, been just real, real sad? You know, someone you've, you've loved has passed or, or you're just you're, you're really going through a, a tough time because of grief, right? And, and somebody else is happy. And it feels like they're being happy at you. You're like, why, why, why is this person smiling? Don't smile at me. I don't want to see it. I don't even want to see people smiling right now. I can't bear to see it. I, I just wish everyone was hurting the way I'm hurting right now. That's, that's what grief can do to us. And that's, that's, what, that's what David's feeling there. Because the future he had imagined is no longer a possibility. That's what happens. We imagine these futures, we have these hopes, and that stuff gets dashed. Now in chapter 2, David's going to go to Hebron and David's going to be appointed king. But that's after he acknowledges his hurt. This is after he sings of his pain. right? He, he, the king, the throne can wait. Here he, he, he pauses. He puts his life on hold. He acknowledges this heartbreak. He acknowledges this grief. He acknowledges this darkness. He has to take the time to say goodbye. We've got to do that in life. We have to take that time to say goodbye and, and acknowledge that. There's a, there's a, there was a show on, on TV that I thought had, had kind of just a really... A really good encapsulation of that. It was on, uh, it was on Disney Plus not too long ago. It's called WandaVision. I don't know if anybody watched WandaVision. Anyway, I watched WandaVision. It was one of those Marvel shows with the Marvel superheroes and, and everything. It, it, was, it, was, it was really good. It was different. But, but it was really good. Anyway, so in the show, uh, this, this woman, Wanda, she's experienced a great deal of loss in her life. She's... She's going through a lot of grief, and it's made her act very self-destructively. She's acting in, in a lot of self-pity and, and anger and, and detachment from other people, from other human beings. And, and obviously, like, this is about Marvel superheroes, so, like, the way, the way that looks in her life looks different than it might look in our lives, but, but still, the emotions behind that were very real. And so towards the end of the show, Wanda's reckoning with this. She's reckoning with this, this loss. She's reckoning with the death of her brother. And her husband, Vision, is sitting beside her. They're, they're help, he's helping her to make sense of it. And they have a conversation. Uh, she's, again, she's, all her actions have been caused by this overwhelming sadness in her life. This grief that, that have caused her to just be mad at the world. She says, it's just like this wave washing over me again and again. It knocks me down. And when I try to stand up, it just comes for me again. It's just going to drown me. And so her husband says back to her, he says, I've never experienced loss. He's a robot. Uh, he says, I've never experienced loss <laughs> because I've never, I've never had a loved one to lose. But what is grief if not love persevering? And I just think that was such a, a great line. I mean, in this, in this Marvel TV show, I was like, what? Whoa, whoa, I wrote it down at the time. I said, wow, that's just a great line. What is grief if not love persevering? You see, the point is, is not to give in to anger or, or self-pity or, or just believing it's all worthless. I mean, that's, that's, kind, of what, that's kind of what can happen when, when we lose and, and, and we, we feel sad and, and we've become heartbroken, you know, maybe multiple times, is just to kind of give up and, and just be angry and bitter. 
I've seen people do that in small ways and in big ways. I've seen people do that, and, and it's ugly, and it's sad. But we have to acknowledge it, right? We have to say, my, my heart is broken. My, my love is gone. This, this is horrible. This, this sucks. This is horrible. And we have to be open to the future God still has for us. See, God's love is going to persevere. There's still a story to tell. And, and David's story is going to look different than he originally thought it was going to look. He's lost a close friend. He's lost his brother in arms, Jonathan. I mean, like if you've ever seen the, the, another, another show, uh, if you've ever seen um, Band of Brothers, the, show, that, that, the tightness that, 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 uh, that men in the military would have. Uh, close, close friends. Closer than blood. He's, he's lost this person. He's lost this person that he loved in his life. And, and suddenly the future looks very different. But there's still a story to be told because God's love perseveres. And we have to acknowledge that loss so that God can do something new in our lives. See, don't let loss cut you off from the new thing God is doing. One of the most profound experiences um, that I've, I've honored and blessed to have as a pastor is when I have the holy responsibility of officiating a funeral. It's nothing I look forward to. It's nothing I, that, I, that I just particularly just love doing, certainly. But it's, it's important to do. Uh, it's part of life. And so, so it's something we... We have to do it, and in, in, in a way, it's, it's good to do. And it's because it's, it's necessary, right? It's necessary to say goodbye. And, and so, so when that happens, I, I pray with family members, and I, and I try to, you know, at the funeral, I try to deliver some words of comfort, to share the gospel. And we ask, we pray together that Jesus receive the one who is loved into the wide arms of His mercy. And we ask Jesus to raise us into new life. To love and serve Jesus in this world so that we may enter His joy in the world to come. And there are times at those services where we're saying goodbye for now, there are times when I do that that the bridge between this world and heaven just seems so very short. Like there's just no space at all between here and heaven. It just becomes so, so very thin, that separation. It's a sacred time. It, it, it can be, it's a, such a very sacred time. And part of the key to that is we ask together in faith. We ask. We ask. It's not it's, it's the gathering of people there asking. We pray together. We read the 23rd Psalm together. Saying goodbye. We, don't, we, don't, we, can't, we can't just be sad in private. We have to share it. We have to share that, right? We don't have to do this all alone. We've got to share our sadness. To share our our disappointments in life. And, and, I don't, and I mean like other kinds of loss too. Like I'm not just talking about the death of a loved one. I, I am, but I'm talking about more than that. I'm talking about the loss, the loss of a pet, the loss of a job. You can lose your job and experience a lot of, a lot of grief. Your future has changed. Uh, the, the end of a marriage. When, when, uh, when sickness or some kind of accident causes life to fundamentally change, if, if you lose a limb or lose mobility or, or lose the ability to speak, that's loss. That's loss. And there is very real grief there. Uh, when, when, when you go through a huge financial calamity, if you lose a house, that's loss, man. That, that is loss. 
And sometimes it can be like just kind of a loss of freedom for people. Like if you have to, all of a sudden, there's been a major change in your life and you've got to become a caregiver to somebody. You've lost a lot of freedom in your life. And though you love this person and, and absolutely you will do anything for them, you, you've lost something. And there's, there's going to be grief there. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to cause stress and, and it's going to be hard. It's, it's going to be hard. That, that's, that's the fact of it. There are all sorts of loss, and they all involve grief. And we don't have to do this alone. We should not do that alone. So I want to once again voice like just how glad I am that we can be back together. We can be back together in this beautiful sanctuary where we're surrounded by the prayers of the saints who have come before. And we can be surrounded and and see the people who love us, who are on this journey with us. And and, and I'm saying, take advantage of that. Use that. Do not do this alone. Don't, Don't feel like you have to be all alone. Now, no human being is truly going to understand. Nobody else is truly, truly, truly going to understand what's going on in the depths of your heart. That's that's just for God. That God's going to understand that. But other people can help. Other people can certainly help. And they will help if you give them a chance. Don't pretend like everything is perfect. Don't, don't put on a smiley face if you, if you just don't feel like smiling. Tell somebody. Talk about it. Reach out. And, and if, if you see somebody else, who looks like they're going through something, reach out to your Christian sister or your brother. Because that darkness is real. It it is real. There's a moment at the end of the Gospel of Luke. There's two disciples. And they're walking along together. And they're talking about the loss of someone they loved. And they, they pinned all their hopes on this person. He was the best. He was the best. He was the one who was going to redeem Israel. They had all their hopes up. But now their hearts are broken. It doesn't make any sense to them. The leaders, their leaders, these ones that they had trusted, they put him to death. They sent him to the cross. And so they share all this with the stranger who's walking there with them. And they have some food today. They have some food together. And Jesus reveals himself. And they see the face of Christ. They recognize the Lord. He is risen. Friends, you see the cross. The cross is the point where all that disillusionment, all that despair, all that hopelessness turns into new life. Because there's pain and there is loss there at the cross. But it's only by coming to the cross that we can come to that point where, where life, the Word of God who is Jesus Christ, can speak to us again and speak life into us. It's in the darkness where the teacher comes to us. God is in the darkness. There is nowhere, there's absolutely nowhere you can go where the light of God has not been. Lamentations 3.31 says, My Lord definitely won't reject forever. Though He has caused grief, He will show compassion in measure with His covenant loyalty. He definitely doesn't enjoy affliction, making humans suffer. So y'all share your loss. Share your pain. Be real. Be, Be real with each other. 
And, and if, like I said, if you know somebody who who's, looks like they're going through it, reach out. And let's be grateful. Let's be grateful for the time we have. Tomorrow is not promised. At least not on this side of heaven. Don't harbor grudges. Make up with people if you can. Forgive people. For the wrongs they've committed. And if possible, let them know you love them. And know the love of God, which perseveres through the darkness and does a new thing. Amen. 48, soft, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. We'll sing the first and last. Page 348, please stand. My friends, may our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God the Father who loves us and gave us grace encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every word and good deed.